Good day everyone. Another incredible test match. The Ashes at its best. But that's not all we're going to be talking about today. So let's go. Second test of the Ashes at Lords. It doesn't get any better than that. The stakes were up, the pressure was on, and there was a lot of controversy, as you always see in the highest and the biggest and the best of games. It wasn't easy for both teams. It was a must win for England, but Australia came out on top. Uh, the controversies I would love to discuss the Bear So dismissal, the star catch, the long room. I have never in my life experienced anything like that before it all happened at lords but at the end of the day it's 2-0 australia and it's all to play for now i can't see england coming back from this 2-0 down in a five match series um look there's hope they're playing in england they have some really quality players but i just can't see the aussies letting them go now what an incredible series so far and let's discuss a little bit more talking about ashes cricket and england players and everything that's happened in the last while. I've got someone very special in the line here. Former South African that's become an Englishman, scored a lot of runs all over the world. Talented player, Mr. David Milan. Thanks for joining us. Maybe. Thanks for having me. Um, moving on to the Ashes, and I know it's a uh, topic on everyone's lips at the moment. Um, first and foremost, baseball. I know you've played under Brendan McCullum. Great guy. Um, great insight about the game. Just your, like a 30 second take on, on what baseball is all about. How's Brendan been running the England team? Uh, from the outside, it's looks very refreshing, the brand of cricket they've played. Um, but what, what is it everyone is talking about? Is there, is there really something so different or is it just a little bit more attacking and a bit more free out there? Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one that I, I think it's brilliant from, from someone watching from the outside as well. I think it's unbelievable to watch. Um, I really enjoy the fact that they haven't taken a backward step at all in the cricket they're playing. I, I guess if you look at previous regimes, it was always, I guess, what a perceived test cricketer should be like. And, and everyone should be averaging 40 and playing a good forward defensive and batting time. Whereas, you know, under Baz, it's, it's if you want to play the game how you want to see it, play the game. Um, you know, if you want to take the game on, take the game on. And, and yes, you're going to make mistakes. Um, but the only way to win games of cricket is to keep taking the game on. And, and yes, you have to be smart. And I guess... That will be the evolution of, of baseball over the next year or two years where the players will start finding the balance like Stokesy did in that last innings of, of how to get himself into the game, um, soak up the pressure and then put the pressure back on the bowlers. Um, you know, it, it looks like they've taken all the pressure off the players. I think something that, I mean, and you'll know this as you, yourself, um, playing international cricket is more about dealing the pressure than anything else because you've probably faced all those bowlers at some point in your career in, in domestic cricket, but it's how you deal with the pressure. Um, and the failures, and, and it looks like under baseball they've taken away that fear of failure. They've they've said they're going to back players. They've given the the players the the freedom to express themselves, um, and it's played dividends. And I know England haven't won these these first two Test matches, but man, they've they've pushed the Aussies um, as hard as I've seen England push them for a long time, um, and it's been great to see. And and you know you look at little moments in the game, and it could have been the other way around. It could have been two 0 for for England. Yeah, it's some of the best cricket I've ever seen. And you, you hit the nail on the head. Some of the best coaches I've ever played on or under always sort of made me feel free and made me feel supported. Um, Graham Smith, one of the best captains I've ever played under, always made me feel like I could do incredible stuff on the cricket pitch. And that's the kind of leader you want in the team. And it seems like Brendan and, and Stokes here have been, have been doing that, well, doing exactly that. And that's why you see some special stuff on the cricket field. Obviously, 2 0 down. It's a tough one back from here. Do you think there's a chance to get back in it? Definitely. I mean, as I said, you look at the the way the last two tests have gone. England could have won them. They had moments where they where they yeah. could have won it, and it takes one special moment again um, in, in in those you know pressure situations where someone um, doesn't make the mistake has been made. Mis the mistakes have been made in the last two games, and suddenly they take the chances. Suddenly they they don't lose that wicket when they when they're crucially needed, or they take that crucial wicket when they need it. Um, 
and suddenly England are two one um, behind with with two to go, and then suddenly the series is is right open. Um, I actually think Headingley will suit England. Um, I mean, it does a little bit on day one, and then it just gets so flat. You know, that's, it's my home ground at the moment, and it's honestly in four day cricket, it's been so flat to bat in in, in four day cricket, um, and it's such a high scoring game uh, ground because of the square and the short boundary. So I think it will suit the way England play. Um, I think Lions are massive miss for them. Um, mm. You know, going. I know uh, Murphy's a, a, a been, been really good so far since he's been playing, but I, I can see England trying to attack him and, and and trying to you know put him under pressure on his uh, Ashes debut. Um, so yeah, I, I think it could be exciting. I think England have got a really good chance ahead of him. Okay, I'm going to keep you for another minute or two, Max. Three three little things happened in that last Test match, and both of us have played um, for Middlesex before. Uh, your comments on the long room. <laughs> yeah, look, I I don't like to see that. You know, I I don't like to see um you know areas where players are walking through to the change room. I don't, I don't like to see players getting um sort of confronted or abused or whatever you want to call it. Obviously, I've not seen any videos or seen what's happened, so uh, you know I can just see. But you you know you don't want to see that. You you get in the heat of the moment. The crowd are going to get behind England, and and you're fully for that. But you know when players are walking into the the changing room, I think that's their space. Um, that's where you allow them to to, to yeah. sort of uh, uh, do what they need to do. I mean, I think you had a few boos a couple of years ago and <laughs> the claim catch or something. So I think you'll have more experience on that. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, uh, when you tour to Australia, um, you don't get the, the red you don't get the red carpet over there. You you people even wait in the hotels for you in the foyer. You arrive back after day's plane. People sit there and go like, mm, clap you in. Well done. <laughs> so, I, I, don't no, see, I must say that Australia is one of the most hostile places to play. Yeah. I don't think I've been told I'm, I'm as bad a player so many times in my life in, in, in the day's play. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you definitely get it in Australia as well. It's like Virat said in the IPL to someone in one of the games. You, if you want to be shut out, you must be able to take it. So, that's the way I see it. I know the, the long room is a bit prim and proper, but... Maybe Aussies deserve a little bit of uh, bad mouthing on the side, <laughs> just to eat things up a bit. Um, Johnny Besto, out or not out? Oh, if you're putting me on the spot here, uh, look, I, I think if you go by the letter of the law, out. You know, yeah. it, it, I, I think if you, I, I think if Kerry had waited another two or three seconds for him to walk out, I think different. But as soon as he's uh, ducked the ball and he's caught the ball, he's thrown it straight away. Um, so it, it looks like it was something that they either been thinking about or he'd been thinking about or planning so by the letter of the law i i get it's out i think the the controversial bit obviously is you know is the last ball of the over is the over dead um but look by the letter of the law it's out and and you know i'd say similar to the the the, the sort of start catch the day before you know every australian thinks that's out and every english player thinks it's not out and i assume it'll be the same with with, with the johnny Bairstow so things um but look I, I guess it's just a lesson for johnny there is just a to make sure that he uh, stays in until it is called over. Um, you know, small things like that change the game, and um, whether it be for you or against you, and hopefully those mistakes aren't made again. Yeah, I fully agree. I think growing up since the age of four or five, that was my worst nightmare. So you, we all know, don't leave your crease. Secondly, the minute I saw Besto, the replay of Besto, I thought, hold on, he put his foot back and that's not out. But then I saw the release time of Kerry at the back and I thought, no, that's, that's fair play. He caught the ball, immediately threw it, and um, Johnny should know better. We all know that as youngsters growing up, keep your ground, stay in your crease. <laughs> it's it's basic. So, unlucky for yeah, him. I think that's the key. I, I think the key is that he, as soon as he caught it, he threw it. So it wasn't like he was waiting for him to walk out of his crease first. It was, you know, they'd obviously, you know, whether it was a pre plan, as I said, they'd obviously noticed that he was taking a step outside of his crease really early, and, you know, he took advantage of that. Um, so you can either say smart cricket or dumb cricket from the other side, whichever wow. whichever way you look at it. Uh, spot on. And Twitter has been heated up. Um, I've, I've loved reading the comments of late. <laughs> it's all happening. Anyway, thanks for your time, bud. Uh, good luck with the hundred coming up. Can't wait to watch you play. And um, I know all the all the viewers will be will be following your progress as well. Hopefully, you'll be the top round scorer again, and the train boys lift the trophy. So all the very best. Have fun, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Abi. Look after yourself, boss. So that was David Milan, great inside. Um, he gave us a little bit of what happens behind the scenes in the English dressing room. Uh, we covered the controversies and I hope you guys enjoyed the insight from one of England's best batters at the moment. And we hope to see him in those test colours again for England.
on that note, just quickly to cover that Mitchell Stark catch, which we didn't really talk about much with David. A very interesting thing that happened there. Um, Mitchell took a very clear catch, had really good control of it, and then at the end just touched the ground with the ball before he stood up. Um, I would love to hear everyone's thoughts. Please let me know if you think it's out or not. I can give you my five cents. I think the ICC need to review the rule book and really clear things up. There's way too many gray areas. In my opinion, Mitchell Stark took a great catch. There was nothing wrong with that. And we need to clear things up. Um, I'm a neutral guy, so I'm allowed to pick sides with this one. But that was out. In other news, this year's Cricket World Cup, the 13th edition, will be without the West Indies cricket team. It's very sad. I grew up idolizing some of their players. I think of Brian Lara. I remember watching Kirtley Ambrose and Courtney Walsh bowl. I was so scared of watching them play. And ultimately, I ended up actually playing against some of these guys and um, becoming friends with them. And I know how proud they are about their cricket and what they've achieved over the years. They used to be the world beaters, the world champions, unbeatable, the invincibles. And now they will not be at this year's World Cup. It's very sad. There's a lot of heartbreak out there. Uh, we've read a lot of tweets about former players being upset about the system, about the organizers from the top. And I think there's a lot of pressure over there. Let's hope they fix things as soon as possible. Of course, the Cricket World Cup without the West Indies. I'm not so sure about that. So after the West Indies lost to Scotland in the Super 6 stage of the World Cup qualifiers being held in Zimbabwe, having already lost to Zim and Netherlands in the group stages, we will not be seeing the West Indies at this year's Cricket World Cup. This is not the first time the West Indies have missed out on a major tournament. In 2017, they failed to qualify for the Champions Trophy and they also failed to qualify for the Super 12s of the last year's T20 World Cup. So the West Indies will not be at this year's Cricket World Cup. It's very sad. It's heartbreaking for me. There's a lot of upset people out there, but I'm pretty sure with all the talent and the pride they have for the cricket, they'll be back in no time. I played a lot of cricket with some of the West Indies players. Some of them I call close friends. I think of Chris Gale. I think of Ian Bishop, one of the best commentators out there. I played around a golf with him. Uh, Carlos Brathwaite, and we've heard what Shai Hope had to say um, during his interview. They're very upset. Um, as we know, some players are blaming the administrators and vice versa. The fans will be very upset as well. We know how proud they are of their cricket. Um, I've played plenty of cricket in the Caribbean before. It's a fantastic place to tour to. And the people over there absolutely love the cricket. They will be gutted. And they need their team to stand up and to come back um, so we can see them in these big tournaments in the near future again. Now let's move on to something a little bit happier, a bit more lighthearted. Let's have a bit of fun. My team have sent me a few clips that I'm going to react to. I've actually seen this one before, but I want to show you my reaction. Shaheen Afridi taking four wickets in the first over of that Vitality Blast game. He's a wonderful bowler. Swings it in, he can swing it away. He's quick. He can hit you on the head. It all happens when you're facing him. And guess what? He's a fantastic guy. I played with him at the Lahore Calanders. He's a wonderful down-to-earth human being. And when he does special stuff like this on the cricket field, it makes me happy. So let's have a look at this clip. There he comes. Oh! It was very close to leg stump. Did the finger go up? Oh yes, it did. No referrals in this T20 games. <laughs> that was very close to sliding down the leg side, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And then, ooh, you see how he swings that ball in? That guy trying to play a or Benjamin trying to play a lap shot. I actually know this Benjamin guy is a good player, but when you haven't faced the ball, that's quite a courageous shot. There it is, that shape again. Caught in the covers, so he didn't really work that hard for it, but the swing in the air really getting him that one. And let's have a look at the fourth one. Oh, there's the catch. It was actually a really good catch. Full stretch right hand, and there's the last one. Oh, swinging in, and there he goes. <laughs> what a player, what a man. Shaheen Afridi, happy for you. Now something completely different. <laughs> I don't know much about Rubik's Cubes, but the world record is broken. This guy has a look at it. What exactly is going on there? Surely tell me it's not going to be under like a minute. He looks prepared. Oh my goodness, 3.134 seconds. 
I think I need 3.134 years to solve that. That is unbelievable. See people in life, you don't just have to play cricket or become something in the business world. You can break a world record with this. You can achieve anything. This is just an incredible clip. Right, let's move on. Talking about Rubik's Cubes. Uh, I actually received something on Instagram recently. Um, it's a guy that, let me not tell you what it is. Let me show you. So more Rubik's Cubes there, and there's my face. <laughs> Can you believe it? Uh, I'm pretty sure this didn't take three seconds to build. But thank you very much, Mr. Rehan. I see you're a big RCB fan. Thank you very much for the very special touch. It's actually nice that someone does a bit of art that really looks like me. I've seen some funny pictures in the past. <laughs> well done and thank you. It's time for a challenge. It's quiz time. So I'm going to bring up a picture here of me scoring a century. I'll tell you, it's the first hint. It's a long time ago. And I'll give you a few more hints. Have a look at that picture. I'm celebrating and I want to know who's the guy that I batted with in this picture. Uh, I don't want to give many more hints. I can tell you that we had a really good pro tier team back then. You can see it's a long time ago. I've got a kookaburra bat in my hand. Um, I can't give you the date, unfortunately. But if you tell me who the partner is at the other end, we both scored hundreds. It was a game changing partnership. We ultimately ended up winning that test match and the series. Uh, it was a very memorable one. You can win a prize. Just go fill in your details on the Google Forms link and make yourself a winner. Let's talk about fitness. Now, this week, talking about fitness will not be your normal fitness, but there's definitely an element of fitness that goes into this. And I'm talking about fast and dangerous bowling. The stuff that comes straight to your head, very uncomfortable, no one enjoys this. I tweeted about it saying that Pat, Pat Cummins sort of sniffed a little bit of a weakness in the English setup, um, really firing in a lot of bounces. But most importantly, in this tweet, I mentioned that they persisted with it. I've been part of teams where they've used the short stuff, but only for two or three overs, and the bowler and the captain both go, mm, nah, let's leave this. Pat Cummins decided, as a bowler himself, who's held, held the bat before, he knows how uncomfortable that is. And he just decided, we're going to have a go. We saw Broad and Anderson at the end there jumping around. We saw most of the English players um, looking really uncomfortable, especially top of the order as well. Ben Duckett getting out. They lost two or three quick ones, and it turned the game upside down. Um, but on the other Aussie side, the English also peppered them. I think it was one of the most bounces I've ever seen in a test match in my life. Um, I would like to see the stats on that. Possibly the most bounces ever bowled. Who knows? But let's pull up the stats there. And maybe you guys can let me know if I'm right or wrong. Uh, it's all about fitness in this situation. I call it mental fitness. Uh, you need to know what you're doing out there. You need to back yourself. And you need to be patient. Um, that sounds weird, doesn't it? To be patient when you're being peppered with short stuff. What I mean with that is there's always a moment in a very difficult spell of batting where you just click and things start turning around. If you're not prepared to go all the way to there, you're not going to succeed. And um, as uncomfortable as it is, I've had some really nice knocks where guys have really tested me with the short stuff. And I just remember being mental tough, keep believing in yourself and being patient. You really help. And that applies for life as well. We all go through some tough situations. Be patient, be mentally tough and believe in yourself. And without a doubt, there will come a moment when things just turn around. And I think both England and Australia need to take that into the next test match. There was one particular test match at Supersport Park Centurion in South Africa where Australia toured over here. And I'll never in my life forget facing Mitchell Johnson in that test match. Um, I was batting at four or five, somewhere around there. And I just saw the openness number three. I was actually batting five and number four, jumping around. Balls getting right around the shoulders, hitting the helmets, Hashim Amla being hit on the grill with his first delivery. It was all happening. And I remember shaking in the change room going like, I can't believe I have to bat next. And that's normal. I was at the top of my game then, but it just shows you that it's okay to sometimes feel scared, even if you know what you're doing. Long story short, that was the biggest test 
of sharp and fast bowling that I ever faced in my life. And I felt like Mitchell Johnson could hit me on the head at any stage. But I kept my eye on the ball. I kept still. I kept the basics in place. And would you believe it? There was a moment when things turned around and I had my chance to start dominating, which I did. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for joining me. All serious stuff aside, we had so much fun this week. Uh, we discussed all topics. There's so much happening in the cricketing world. And I would love to hear your comments. Please take part in that quiz and give me the comments on all the topics we discuss. I would love to hear what you think. And then, talking about the short pitch stuff, remember to stay patient. Remember to keep backing yourself. And last but not least, never, ever give up. And that reminds me of a song written by Jason Mraz. And it's called, I Won't Give Up. I'll be strumming, strumming us out. I also sang this song to my dad at his 70th birthday party. I posted it on Instagram. My wife was next to me. And that's the only reason I was all right that night. But I'm going to try it again. I'm going to strum us out here. And I'm going to be singing the song. I hope you enjoy it. I look into your eyes While like you're watching the night sky Or a beautiful sunrise There's so much they hold And just like them all stars I see that you've come so far to be right where you are But how old is your soul? Cause I won't give up on us Even if the skies get rough I'm giving you all my love I'm still looking up Cause I won't give up No, I won't give up Thank you. See you next time.